Okay, so challenge number two, even Fibonacci numbers. This challenge is to sum all the even Fibonacci numbers that don't exceed 4 million. So here's a quick um, text readout of the problem. Um, feel free to go to the website and read this yourself. Try this out yourself before I do. Uh, I'm also cutting quite a bit of the screen off there, so you might want to go and read it yourself so you can see the whole thing. But basically, what we're going to do, generate the Fibonacci sequence, check which ones are even, sum them up, print out the answer. Pretty simple, but a little bit more complex than the last one. So, the way I'm going to do this is um, I'm going to generate the Fibonacci sequence first. I'm going to store it in a list. I'm then going to loop through the list, check which ones are even, and sum them. So the looping through the list, checking which ones are even, and summing them. We did something very similar in the last episode, where um, we checked multiples of three or five to check for an even number. You just check, obviously, if it's a multiple of two. So we'll be copying pretty much the same thing for doing that. The only difference in this one is generating the list. Um, Instead of being able to say I got for i in range um, 1000 like we did in the last one, um, we need instead of in range 1000 we need like for i in and then we're going to have to give it some sort of list of the Fibonacci numbers which obviously we're going to have to generate ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to call Fibonacci sequence, so fib sec is equal to an empty list, sorry not an empty list, um, we'll pass in the first two values of the Fibonacci sequence because you can't generate these, you're just going to have to give it them two, that's how the sequence is defined, you have to give it the first two. So there's the first two values for the Fibonacci sequence. Now what we need to do is we need some way of generating the next one um, and we need some way of stopping once we hit the right number. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say um, Fibonacci, so fib next, this is going to be the next Fibonacci number, is equal to the Fibonacci sequence, oops, why is that going? Square brackets. So the last term plus the second last term. So what this does, these square brackets right here, I should have probably explained this on this, but you define lists with square brackets. So we're putting one and two inside square brackets because it's a list. What I'm going to do here actually is I'm just going to comment this. We're going to run a couple of things on this. So we're going to say print fibsec. We're also going to print fibsec zero. Um, copy paste this we'll try a couple of different indexes so we're going to do zero we're going to do one we're going to do minus one we're going to do minus zero we'll see what that does and we're also going to do minus two uh, I'll change these around actually just to um, and I'll add one more in here we may as well try and do two as well so we're going to get errors here but whoops that's the wrong one that was from last challenge Whoops. So don't forget when you've uh, defined all this in a function like I have defined main, don't forget to call main at the bottom. So we get an error on line 7 where the index is out of range. So the reason that this index is out of range, index 2, is because we've only got two things in the list. And remember Python uses zero indexing, so the first element is zero, the, first, the second element is one, uh, the third element that doesn't exist would be 2, that's why this is an error. So that's why we can't use that line. Now what did print out, you can see we printed the list, we printed out 1 and 2 right here. And you can see we printed out element 0, so we printed out 1, and we printed out element 1, which was 2. Now if I rerun this without that um, error given coding, you can see what all these other three do. So element minus 1 is two it's that this line right here so if I get rid of these other print statements now now we've already seen what they do so Fibonacci sequence minus one is two 
this is the last element so when you put a negative number in there it basically means you're going to work through the list backwards so minus one is backwards the first element um, so that's two now backwards the second element is one and then negative zero is just the same as zero um, so that's just going to print out the first element again there's no reason I, I can think of that you would ever use minus zero but I just want to show what this does just for anyone wondering um, so yeah hopefully that makes sense of that so what we're doing here is we're defining Fibonacci next as the last value plus the second last value so this will give us 2 plus 1 which will give us 3 which for any of you that know is the next term in the Fibonacci sequence so what we're going to do now is we're going to say Fibonacci sequence dot append and we're going to append Fibonacci next so what this does is it takes Fibonacci sequence takes our list it appends to our list um, this is a method this is when you put a dot in and then call something it's a method but you don't really need to know too much about this um, feel free to google it and read up on what methods are if you want but all you need to know is that this is basically going to call a function on our um, list variable so it's just going to what this is going to do is add Fibonacci, Fibonacci next to our sequence so if I now print fib sequence you'll see it's not 1 2 anymore it's now 1 2 3 because we've added Fibonacci next to it so now what we could do next is we could repeat this line right here well we could repeat all three lines actually so if I copy these over you'll see we now get the next one because we're taking now 3 and 2 and we're adding them to get 5 so this here is generating the Fibonacci sequence and obviously we could do this over and over and eventually have the whole sequence but we're not going to do that because what would be the point in that the whole idea of coding is to make all lives easier so what we're going to do instead is we're going to go up here we're going to create a bit of room now we're going to use a while loop so similar to a for loop like we did in the uh, the last one where we said um, for i in range while loops just go until their condition is no longer true so what, what you'd pass in here is something um, so you'd say like y, while um, i is less than 10 and you might have defined i up here to be equal to 0 um, and then inside your loop you might say every time we pass i plus equals 1 so plus equals um, that just adds to this value so I think actually I didn't go through this in the last video but I'm going through it now so here you go so this basically means i add 1 to the current value of it it's basically the same as saying i is equal to i plus 1 it's the exact same thing as that it's just shorthand for it in python um, plus equals and then 1 so what this would do is it would i is less than 10 so that would return true for this first pass through it would jump inside the while loop then it would say i plus equals 1 so an i is now equal to 1 and then it's at the end of the while loop so it would go again it would start again this time i is equal to 1 but 1 is still less than 10 so it would go again and now i plus equals 1 so it would go to 2 and it would keep doing this keep doing this until i eventually hit 10 then it would break out the loop and continue the rest of the the code so what we're going to do instead of having an i parameter in here we're just going to say true so this loop will go forever until we tell it to break so break you'll see it turns red here it's an actual python command it's a keyword similar to how print goes red and how while goes red these are actual functions so what break does is it can force you to break out of a while loop or a for loop um, at a specific point so if we say while true break what's going to happen is it'll jump inside this while loop it'll then break and it'll continue the, the rest of the code obviously that would then be useless um, so we're not going to have break immediately there but there will be a break in there you need a break in there to actually have it end eventually otherwise you're just going to get stuck in an infinite loop so what we're going to do is we're going to put all these inside this while loop we're going to get rid of this print we don't need this print anymore so we're going to say while true Fibonacci next is equal to this and then append to it now our break condition so think about the uh, the question the question asks for all the numbers up to 4 million if I bring this back up on the screen you can see here whose value does not exceed 4 million so what we're going to do is we're going to say 
I'm going to put some extra lines in here. I'm going to say if fib next is greater than 4 million. So if we're over 4 million. Uh, have I put too many zeros there? No, I think that's about right. So if fib next is bigger than 4 million, we know we, we've got the entire sequence we need. So we can just break. There's no need to keep going. So this break will actually take us out of this while true loop and we'll know we've actually got the entire Fibonacci sequence that we need. Um, if Fibnext is less than 4 million, we're not going to break, so we'll just continue and we'll append the uh, the next value to the sequence. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll just keep this a little bit tidy. I'm just going to get rid of all these extra spaces that we don't need. Now, once we've broke, we know we've got the whole sequence we need, so we can say print and then we can print our Fibonacci sequence just to see what it looks like. So if I run this, you see we get the Fibonacci sequence 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and you can read through this all is right. And you can see our final value here is 3.5 million. So 3,524,578. Now the value before this was 2 million or something, so you know 2 million plus 3 million is 5 million. So the next value would have been over 4 million and we know that, that value is then too high to include in our list. So step one, creating the Fibonacci sequence we've done. Um, this does it and we know we're stopping at the right point. Um, we're not just creating the sequence forever. Now this next bit I'm going to do quick because we've already seen it in the, the last tutorial I gave. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for i in Fibonacci sequence if i mod 2 is equal to 0 total plus equals i and now we need to find total down here so that we don't get an error on that so total start at 0 then at the end we're going to want to print total run this and we get an answer now the answer there is 4,613,732 and you'll see that is the answer. So hopefully this makes sense to you, this last little bit that I flew through. If it doesn't, you might want to refer back to the last video we did. Um, this is basically just going to let i take each of the values in Fibonacci sequence. So i will start at 1, it'll then go to 2, it'll then go to 3 if we look over here, it'll then go to 5, then go to 8, and for each of these values it'll say if i mod 2 is equal to 0, so if i is a multiple of 2, the total plus equals i, so if i is even, we're going to add it to total, else we're just going to continue. At the end we print total, and then we get the answer. So hopefully this helps, hopefully it makes sense to you. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments below. And that'll be it for this video, thanks for watching, I will see you in the next one.